this computer. Oh. Security. Okay. So uh, invite yourself to, to the peace. The silent still presence. which is your very self. Silent and still. And yet, So loud in a way, always there. In silence, it is the language of love. In the expression. Of our reality. So we recognize ourselves as this borderless presence. Which is recognizing itself via this particular body mind. effortlessly it says yes to love and beauty it says yes to causeless joy freedom and happiness for everyone and everything <coughs> it's the the light that shines within each one of us is in our heart of hearts. Our true connection. So we are grateful for this invitation, for this recognition. <laughs> no. 
Our love is borderless. It touches everyone and everything. It knows it, it knows no barriers. So we bless the world via this recognition and via our love for truth and our dedication to live in the path of, of light and truth. So that we are an extension, an extension of, of God's hands and arms and body. true meaning of thy will be done. And I am thou. And so we, we do not hold on. We are the flow. We are the, the current, the current of, of love and kindness. It's such a, a beautiful expression which is our expression, my expression, the path that I choose. And whenever the, the old path of me and my personal ambitions and fears and concerns arises, we offer it to the highest understanding. We offer it to the higher understanding that there is one truth, one reality, one love, one consciousness which is shining equally through all of us and through everything. So every moment we have available to us the wisdom which is our understanding about love, about truth, about one reality which is
should not divide it in any way. Like in the in the forest, there are so many different plants and trees. But they're all equal in God's eyes. Similarly, in our experience, so many different experiences, various people we meet, interactions we have, Can we can we perceive everything, everybody as this one self? Myself as yourself, as oneself. Rather than adopting the position that I'm in a separate body mind and a particular person to recognize the beingness in all being. Not to be caught up in the particular ways in which the world and the body and people appear to you, but to somehow be open to the recognition of the being, beingness in all being, the same beingness, the same awareness, the same reality. Do we need to hold on to the past? Do we need to hold on to the me stories, the stories about myself, him and her, what they did to me, what happened to me? Or can we be this fresh present presence right now, moment by moment, fresh beingness, the freshness of being, the purity, the clarity, the innocence, the not knowing, an open field, an open space of listening, sharing, exploring without an a priori position about this, about that, about him and her, the world, politics. Not to be Carrying a bag full of luggage, baggage, we keep filling, and carrying, and dragging, filling it with more and more 
what for? How, how freeing is it to be carrying this heavy burden? What, what for? For whose good? For what good? Take a look. When you are met by a friend with loving open arms, isn't it, isn't it wonderful? Can you, can you meet your experience with that, that love? To, to, to explore that possibility. It's, it's available to every one of us, moment, moment by moment. To be clear about our interest, not in holding on to stories, but our interest in but this fresh, meeting this fresh birthing and dying moment by moment. Unburdened, unburdened. No, not interested in writing a script or narrative about, but what and what for? What for? Sometimes we may feel that we need to hold on to a position. We need to maintain a certain stance, a certain And, and so then there is no way out. Because when we take on a position that's based on past hurts, we trigger, we trigger the same in the other. They, they copycat you. The best way to cure the past is to come to the understanding about the eternity of being, the eternity of presence. Which is not in time, we do not exist in time. So, time is the choice we choose. We choose time by maintaining it. We maintain the past as what? As a, a current thought, a current image. An image of a hurt, a hurt child, a hurt person. Indign indignation, indignation, we carry it along. We limit ourselves and limit the other by carrying along those emotions. 
which are calling to be let, to be released because everything is appearing and disappearing moment by moment except i i awareness except awareness presence beingness which holds on to nothing which is not hurt what is it that's feeling hurt it's feeling abandoned that's feeling rejected that's feeling wronged take a look is that something happy that we need to maintain What are we waiting for to, to drop it? You drop it first and then I'll drop it. If you don't drop it, I won't drop it. But consciousness is holding on to nothing. <laughs> nothing. The image of yourself is, is a foolishness because you are not an image. Positive or negative image, same thing. For what purpose do we limit ourselves or limit the other to a bundle of images? Maybe the body has a past and a history, but you don't.
Okay, so. If there is anything you would like to explore, please make sure to unmute your mic. And you're welcome to turn on your video. So any, any sharing, any questions? Hello, Walter. Hello, Maggie. Thank you uh, for that. Let me see. I'm not sure I'm hearing you, Walter. One moment, let me see. Uh, is your, is your uh, volume on, Walter? Can you hear me? I, I could hear. hear. I can I hear Walter. I cannot hear you. Okay. One, two, three, four, mm, five. Am I doing something wrong here? Let me see. <laughs> let me go to my settings and see if there is something that I have. Uh, okay, you want to try? Walter, can you hear me now? Oh, now I hear you. Okay, something about my settings. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, thank you for that wonderful guidance. Oh, you're welcome. Um, maybe a, a, a little exploration um, with regards to the, the kind of the world view. Um, I could sit on my couch uh, quite happily most of the time and be absorbed. However, of course, we have to go out into the world. Um, the way that I move about the world um, is you have explained it to others at, at certain points, but I'd like to get your take on it to see if you can maybe add some clarity or some refinement. Um, so moving about the world, I used to imagine that I was a separate person in a body encountering other separate others with, you know, objects, etc. My view now is, is more um, uh, that I'm moving through myself. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the space is what I am, and this body is a unit that allows me to measure and report back to myself. Um, as I move about, it's clear to me that awareness is infinite and eternal in the sense that I, you know, wherever I go, I'm reporting back to myself, I'm there. Um, the, the mind is lit up by infinite consciousness and I can't experience a place that the body physically is not because there's nothing there for me to measure or to report with yeah. but I am in your bathroom right now I'm in your living room <laughs> and if I had something there to report back to me uh, sorry, to, to, to measure eyes, ears, sense of smell, then I can say what's happening there. But right now, um, this is my experience here in my apartment because this is where my apparatus is to measure. Um, and so it's a beautiful feeling moving through myself uh, and, and observing myself, seeing you as another point of view as me. Mm -hmm. uh, can you offer some, any insight into that or any clarity that would help me to mm -hmm. refine this? So I would just wonder when you say I, what do you refer to when you say I? In your, in your reference to I, when you say I, what are you referring to? When I say I, it's the one who all of the perceptions are being reported to. Um, the person is present for, you know, interactions with others, but they're a large part of, of my attention is on the one who is being reported to, to myself. And how many perceptions are you having? One. Yes. 
So the way I'm hearing you that that you're referring to I as I'm going to use my own words here, the reality that perceives. Yes. So as long as you're referring to I as the reality that perceives, and as long as you understand or are open to the, the possibility of one reality, in a way that, that covers it all. So I am the reality that perceives in this moment, this perception, this sensation, this thought. And there is one reality. So whatever is being perceived is always perceived by I by this one reality. Uh, so as that understanding settles more and more, becomes more and more beyond any doubt, because sometimes there may be some questions, for example, okay, I get it that I am the reality that perceives, and I'm perceiving right now this screen, how come I'm not perceiving you, the color of, of, of the walls in your room? There may be some questions of that sort that may arise. And these questions should not be uh, brushed, uh, swept under the rug they should be investigated. Uh, because in uh, the investigation of whatever doubts or questions you may have, you will uh, in time get uh, more and more satisfaction, less and less doubt, less and less questions. And your experience of being the one reality that the, the, not the one, the reality that is perceiving right now, and that there is one reality will become uh, more and more uh, beyond any doubt. And uh, the, your wandering mind will wander less and less until, until it uh, stops Wandering, wandering, W A N stops wandering, and uh, your experience uh, becomes that of uh, the natural uh, state of being, like like your, your experience of yourself and the experience of the weather are not become non-distinct. They're not, not distinguish, distinguishable. The weather and yourself are one. Uh, are one. So yes, what you are sharing, uh, Walter, sounds uh, so it resonates. Just, uh, I would say, uh, make sure you get to the absolute certainty and refine and explore whatever questions you have, whatever questions you may have. Explore them, bring them out, dig into them. Uh, and uh, without adopting any any new beliefs, simply remain with your with your uh, exploration and your understanding uh, will uh, firm itself.
and confirm to you experientially the the formless reality of being, which you are and which everything is. So that the world that you experience and you are not two. In fact, the world is a, 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 a your conception, your conception that in your direct experience, there is no world, there is just consciousness, awareness. Conceptually, there is a world, there is a body, which is, which is okay, it's not a problem. It's just not to confuse the concept with the reality of consciousness. And also in your life, that understanding as it's living itself through you, uh, the quotes and quotes challenges that life may present you can become opportunities for you to look deeper, to explore deeper, to wander deeper. Uh, because there is a difference between experiencing a, a, a certain situation or challenge in life and experiencing suffering. There can be challenging situations in life that may require some ingenious uh, solutions or calling for help or whatever to, uh, uh, to deal with the situation. But the key thing is the suffering, that there isn't the, the suffering. And if there is the suffering, then to be exploring that because in the moment of suffering, you have separated yourself, se somehow separated yourself, and you're experiencing the, the illusion of separation. And of course, the, the desire for unification, which is our, unici our unicity, our unicity, which is our natural state, And so the suffering or the angst or the internal uh, contraction is a, a helpful pointer to uh, let go of that false position of me and me and him, me and her, me and etc. Anyways, uh, I went, you know, a little bit overboard in what I'm sharing, sharing with you, but I, I, I if you don't mind, I just sometimes just speak like this way. It's very helpful. Thank you so much, Maggie. Okay, Walter. Lovely. Any questions? Uh, Shiva, salut Shiva. Salut, salut toi. Ça va? I'm in the middle of this jungle clearing thing and I'm listening. Okay. Uh, I'm listening at the same time. Okay. And I maybe it's just a jungle clearing that I thought it would be nice if you would say a couple of words to this apparent uh, conundrum of so when one goes more and more into this not only knowing, but also experiencing oneness. Um, the seeming... I, I mean, you can just talk about a couple of tics and tr tricks and uh, tricks on your side or like ways of dealing with. You know, when you come into uh, the presence and the, into the seeming presence of some seeming other who seemingly is in uh, a lot of fear, and uh, that fear has triggered obviously a lot of suffering and maybe the fear can even trigger some form of aggressivity or mental convictions and 
you are in the presence of kind of the shadow of yourself, so to speak, right? In the sense that the other doesn't really exist as another, but the manifestation of what appears in front of you through another quote unquote other human being is that of fear or aggression or deep suffering. And so what would be practical steps which you could you know share with us in uh i don't want to say dealing with it but sort of transcending it yeah um yeah. would you say a couple of words to that well you know shiva uh, for one thing uh uh-huh. as long as you are viewing you know you are viewing uh you have uh, of course the what francis refers to as the the mirroring neurons you know so in a way uh we uh, we are also we are viewing and we are picking up we are picking up the you know the, the other person's you know energy and and angst and uh, body language and energetic field so uh, so that's 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 that situation can present itself you know to you irrespective of whether it, you have no issues it's not it's not your issue in other words something that you're coming upon um, right but because of because of you know our our transparency so we do sense that we do perceive that of course there is hopefully understanding the understanding is that uh, suffering the suffering of the so-called other suffering is a result of a false perspective in other words for some reason when we mistake ourselves to be you know a separate self a separate consciousness there is suffering that's there is this understanding you see it you 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 have the understanding and yet because you are transparent to the other, you're also sensing, but you're not retaining. In other words, you're not suffering. You're sensing the in your in your in your in your somatic structure. You're you're sensing the, the in your belly, in your the, the the other person's angst or the universal angst, but it's not being retained. You're not resisting it or fighting against it or saying what's wrong with this person why don't they get it etc it's not being it's not personal and uh, right right no that's clear that's yes, the departure yes, yes so there is a a, a a a recognition that you know when you put your hand in the, in the cold water your hand is going to get cold if you put your hand in right. warm water, you got, this is in a way what is happening. You simply, you are a, you are a conduct, conductor, <laughs> your, your conductivity, yes? Uh, but it's not personalized. So the, the thing is to be watchful at when, if, if at all, at when it shifts from you being in this difficult place because it's not fun, you know, to mm. to that little shift where it sort of become, you know, God, I I I can't stand it. I need to get out of here. I'm I'm suffering. Whenever mm. you you there is that that little shift and you're suffering at that moment, you've you've rather than being which you already are this transparency at that moment you're setting up a structure some sort of structure to do something whatever it is maybe you want to defend something you want to fix something whatever i don't whatever there is some structure. you go back into person in other words you go yes. back into person you, yes. said you go back into person and at that moment so, but that wasn't oh busy Go ahead. Oh, go. No, no, no. Don't worry. Go, continue. Uh, I, was saying, I was saying at, at that at that at that moment you're perceiving an issue out there. You're perceiving now. The, the there is now a problem out there. While a problem is imaginary, imaginary. A problem is imaginary. Why? 
because consciousness perceives no problems. I mean, there are no problems in the universe. Problems is right. when we choose, we choose that there is a problem. We say, no, there is a problem. Okay, this is different from, for example, uh, you know, if if the if the if the the you're cooking and you you forgot the or if something falls the milk falls on on the floor and you mop it, that's not a problem. It's just a situation. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm using the I word. Can, can I just say. I'm sorry, Vazi. I I think you went a little on a different tangent okay. in a good way. I mean, that's that's all win-win, but. You went into the basic ABC, how to deal with the fact that the, the so-called other is not personal, not to be taken personal, and et cetera. And that, that's extremely valid. But my question was going more into, um, I would say, a philosophical uh, approach in the sense of if all is one, right? I mean, not, not if, all is one. So all is one, and in that oneness... There is manifestation of extreme fear. And that fear is sensed not through philosophical understanding, but it's sensed, I would say, nearly on a physical level, like uh, one animal is sensing that the other animal is, is, is afraid, and then there's a stampede or something like that. I don't know. I can't define it exactly, but I, it, it happens that I sometimes have those extrasensorial moments where I just know what is going on with this other being, what, what her or his story is. I just, I get some sort of, not always, but sometimes I get this intuition. And so this, this one is me. It's, it's, it's another manifestation of the me consciousness. Right. And, and in, in, in and I'm just wondering I mean, I don't want to go cerebral on that, but it seems there is a lot of fear out there. There is, there is. I can feel it too. It's big time. There is something big about to happen. I feel that too, Magdi. I know what he's talking about. You feel in your, in your cells, in your bones. You say, wow, where is this coming from? So, yes. So what... So what is that to say about that? That's not, okay. Um, it's just, uh, it's sort of interesting that we are, we are all of it. Yes. You know what I mean? We are yes. all of it. We're not yes. some sort of like enlightened being who sits on a cloud and, yes. and is not touched by anything. We are still like 100% oh. of that fear. Yeah. We're 100% that ignorance, which we can see grow worldwide apparently growing and i know that you're going to say at the end of the day nothing is really happening and you're no. right nothing is happening no well all i can say is that yes there is you know fear you know in you know in in the world there, there are volcanic eruptions you know on the earth all I, I, i'm just speaking from my experience, or it's all I can share with you, is I don't experience that. I, I'm not saying that, you know, you know, hey, look at me. No, I, I don't mean it at all in that way. I'm just talking about an experience where fear is not part of, part of your experience. Yes, it is. If you are saying that, yes, fear is exists in the world and like Anna is saying, yes, she can feel it. Okay, I, I, I obviously, yes. I mean, <laughs> it, it's prevalent. Yes, yes, it is prevalent. And, and I don't want to just basically throw a blanket on that and say, well, it's all illusion. No, no, I'm, no, I'm not saying it's illusion. I'm talking about the end of fear. I, I, I mean, I'm just speaking what I, what I know. I mean, I'm just singing my song. I mean, I, I'm not selling any goods. I'm just saying that, yes, yes. I, I, if I understood you correctly, you're saying there is, there is fear in the world and, and you sense it. Yes. Okay. Okay. I, I got you. I hear you. But am I missing, am I missing something? Am I, I hear you. Well, yes. if, 
the, the, the question is just like, uh, it's, it's sort of, I'm, I'm sort of intrigued because, I mean, I'm not coming across like that. And I did really daring things in this linear life I could talk about for hours, which I won't. But uh, in the understanding that I am now, I said most of my life I've lived in a state of separation. And despite the appearances, there was a lot of fear. In, in, in my daily life, worrying about money, worrying about relationships, worrying blah, 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 the whole shebang like everybody does. And it feels like maybe since three years, I don't know, it doesn't matter. But right now in this moment, there's a total absence of fear. Fear is not part of my life. Wonderful. And I was just triggered by, it, I, I love it. And I'm so thankful for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not that the outer circumstances have automatically radically changed or anything mm -hmm. that, you know, it's just from the inside, there's a, a very perceivable absence of fear. And uh, however, in the, in the moment I'll go into town and, you know, shop in a supermarket and, and see all these zombies like sitting alone in their car with a mask on and stuff like that, you know. Uh -huh. It's like it's, it comes across very strongly that whatever is perceived is not living in an absence of fear. And on the contrary, uh, I mean, I'm not watching TV or anything like that on purpose, but every time I'm getting in contact with some other new kind of statement or law or blah, 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 it's just more fear mongering, more fear mongering, more perceived fear, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, wow what what exactly happens here because on one level in my my quote unquote old version separate self me there is so much less fear and i know that that fear comes from a dissolution of separation yet when i go into the so-called world and perceive the so-called others there seems to be in a much increased amount of fear i mean maybe that fear was always there and it was just not perceived but and it's just interesting because i'm like if i'm all one then i cannot say hey i'm all fine in my little house everything is cool uh i'm fearless i have enough food but meanwhile uh, next door, everybody is starving and bites their fingernails yeah. off day in, day out because of fear. You know what I mean? But the fearlessness has nothing to do with the, the situ your situation in, in the world, body, mind. It has nothing to do with... Absolutely, you're right. Right, right, right. So fearlessness has to do with, uh, with your, your, deep un <clears throat> your deep understanding about, about yourself, you know, about truth, right. about reality. So, uh, uh, you know, if you're if perceiving, if you're, whatever you're perceiving, uh, as long as it's not, it's not getting, triggering you, or if it is triggering you, then it's a good question to, to, for you to be looking at. At least for me, it would be a good question for me to look at. I would be I would be taking a look at, at that within myself because it is it is an inside job. Um, yeah, so I, you know, I, 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 I don't know if this came across right. My question is like it's nice it's nice to to have this dialogue with you because I feel it's in the in the exchange that a lot of stuff um, is revealing itself on very many deep levels I, because it's really hard to find a a concrete phrase question mark uh, on that subject. The, the it's sort of an energy field of um, you know I don't know maybe those are the like the birth pains of a new world. I, I have no idea, but this sort of like you know if it happens for one of us like for you or for Ramana or for, you know, Jean Klein or et cetera, et cetera. So there is this, we know that we still, each one of us have to go through the process of finding truth within us as a living experience. It's not like I just, you know, bandwagon onto Magdi and then I'm, I'm all good or on Ramana or whatever. I mean, so I have to have my own 
thing, which is if you want to some degree a um, an underlying of, I mean, not an underlining, but a sort of like validation of the sort of idea of separation, because in my body mind expression, the truth has to manifest and nobody can do that for me. I cannot, okay. I cannot, you know, just subscribe to your YouTube channel and then that's it. It's like it, it has to happen through me. And that's somewhat an individual uh, expression of consciousness, which needs to flower in its own way. And then once that flowering is happening, taking place gradually or completely, it doesn't matter, then there is the perception of so-called others, which as I don't know what the man's name was who just shared, says, yeah, then there's a difference of, uh, you know, experience of what used to be the others. There's, a, there's an understanding that the so-called others are just a reflection of ourselves, like a mirror. Or, and, 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 and that's where this question came in on this, like, whoa, you know, that's right. what's reflected. You know, in, in the world, there are a mixture of uh, appearances. There are uh, people on the right, people on the left, people on the middle, and you're wherever wherever you are you you are interfacing with uh, with with all sorts of people from, from different convictions from different backgrounds with different points of views so there is a certain you know intelligence about how to navigate that without uh, getting uh, caught up you know in the you know in in those in those in those differences you know you have to right. so, be a little smart about how to maneuver your way around uh, the situation in which you, you are. That's uh, that's relatively basic, and there is there is right. no is no suffering in that. There are no issues in that. It's just that uh, when you're walking in the forest, there are places where there are thorns, there are places where there are rocks, there are places where it's easier to walk to the right and then a little bit to the. It's a navigation thing. It's a it's a relatively simple and basic. Right, right. No, but it's, it's, it's true what you say, and, and I really appreciate your answers. It's, it, it, I'm just finding myself often in a, I don't know how much is intuition and how much is sort of like uh, separation in there of saying, oh, I prefer the area of the forest where there's no thorns, and I prefer the ones where there are flowers, and I'm sort of like a little... Um, wary of that mechanism you know, of choosing the the people who I can uh, be in an energetic flow with and avoiding the you know stressed out fearful oh, it makes whatever sense. That it might makes, be. Sense. makes sense you to know make, to make choices it makes sense. it's true it's true it's true and yet I'm I'm in my inquiry I'm looking into like for instance, when I'm driving to Kona and I'm like, oh my God, I will have to deal with that damn supermarket, which I know they're like the extra super duper Nazi vigilance. So then I'm like, that I have to go there because I have to buy something. There's no other place to get it. And I'm sort of, there is a sort of like, eh, you know, I don't want to go there. I don't want to expose myself to this energy field. And then I'm like, who's the one who doesn't want to go there? You know what I mean? So I use it as an inquiry tool and say, what's the big deal? I mean, you know, your freedom is not dependent on prison or no prison or ignorance or no ignorance. It's the, it's beyond that. So, but you see what I mean? There's a sort of like subtle selecting mechanism somewhere where I feel, oh, it's the person because otherwise, or maybe it's a wrong idea that I have, this idea that, uh, you know, this choosing mechanism is maybe not completely only but person, and it's just a natural thing to go for the flowers and avoid the thorns. I have no idea. I mean, every, to say. every person is different, has their own preferences and has their own views, their own tendencies. You have yours. Obviously, uh, what you are describing is a situation where you have to go through a little... Uh, unfortunately, in the, mar in the supermarket, for example, that you're describing, if you don't, since you don't have too many choices, and if you don't, well, heck, I mean, 
in a way, you, you know, you, what do you say? You, you, you put your, uh, you, you close your nose and you walk through the, you know. Heck, live uh, without it. You make it, you make it short, you make it short and, uh, you know, as short as you. No, 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 no. I know what you mean. I totally understand that. It's like, that, that's totally cool. I, I was just thinking about where is the line, where's the border between likes and dislikes being a person and likes and dislikes sort of flowing naturally in the field of awareness, you know? Yes. That might be, you know, that might be a nice a well, thing to ponder at some point. Yeah. Well, in your, when your experience is, and I'm not talking about being away from the world, when you experience including being in the world, whichever way it appears to you, is mostly, mostly meaning, meaning 99% or 99.5%, how about that? Um, harmonious, irrespective. I, I'm not saying that the world mm -hmm. is, but your experience is, is, has a harmony in it and has, you know, a peace in it and, uh, you, you know, you walk by, sometimes there are bad smells, etc. But your experience in its most, in its bulk, is uh, uh, harmonious, happy, sweet. Then I would say that, that you, you know, you are in God's garden, uh, as a way of speaking, you know, metaphorically mm -hmm. speaking. Yes, so that, like the that's a good, a good barometer. Uh, I remember... Uh, Atmananda, when Atmananda Menon was asked about, uh, you know, or look, you know, what it's like to, to sort of, you know, be, you know, uh, be uh, under, with the, in the understanding, he said when uh, conditions in the world and conditions in the body and conditions in the mind no longer take you away from the peace of being, something to that effect. He said that um, yeah, that's a good barometer. I know it's, it sounds very stringent and very... <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's, it doesn't at all. This is how... That's it, 100%. This is what... It, I nearly had this, you know, I nearly had this feeling that there's a correlation between... Uh, I mean, all of these are like thoughts, so I'm not want to take too much of your time with it, but... I had one day I had this like feeling of like thinking, feeling that it, it, just because there is this incredible amount of pressure and fear and control, which is going on around the world right now, maybe that is exactly what we need in order to wake up. You know, maybe it's just sort of, maybe there's a correlation between the increase of pressure there is something in the universe says, hey, you're a little fucking stupid little human beings. You're, you're, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna light some real nice big fire underneath your ass and then see if you wake up or not, you know? I mean, who knows? Yeah. It's possible. So, magic. It's possible. What you, having heard what you, you one, one moment, Anna, one moment, Anna. Having heard you say that, Shiva, I would say that irrespective of that, there is already in people's lives, and there's already been in people's lives, even though on the surface it may, uh, not not seem like it has already been a lot of that you know just wanted to yeah to so share. so true yeah. so true thank you Marty. i let you go so you can speak with anna okay yeah. oh. lots of love okay yes. okay shiva okay. Uh, yeah. Ciao. sorry anna yes it's just uh sorry yeah. me i was the bad mannered but i uh -huh. get so excited because yes. what he just said and what you just said is so it's so there, yes, there is a part of me, like beautiful Walter said, that knows that it's just all there. And poop is poop, and sun is sun, winter is winter, summer is summer, and I like more to be in the summer, but I'm also fine with the winter, because I'm not dependent upon summer or winter. Yes. But there is something that probably you are so evolved, you don't feel it. But I, I, I just feel like this, and I'm getting better because I'm getting less uh, upset about people walking in the park away from everybody wearing a mask. I just want to go there and take the mask off.
And I say, wow, do I have this right to interfere in other people's? And if that is bothering me, it's me. Like Walter was saying, what it's me and what it's not me. And what I heard you saying is, there is poop and it smells bad. There is perfume or flower and it smells good. And it doesn't matter because in this experience, we will go through the motions of the experience, but because of our contact with our true self, it's not going to glue. Is that what you said, Magi? I mean, in my primitive question here. I mean, also some people's preference diff- you know, differs, you know, from, uh, from yours. Some people prefer uh, spicy, some other prefer salty, some other prefer sweet. Uh, so it's very important to, to understand uh, that, that freedom applies to every body equally, not uh, uh, according to any particular design, not particular to your own mind or your own, your own view. That's very important to honor uh, uh, people's freedom because it is God's freedom that is uh, expressing itself through particular minds, through all minds in very specific, is very specific ways and very specific forms. So when we are, when we are sensing whatever we are sensing, you know, there are two aspects to it. One aspect is we are sensing because because we are trans, we are one. We, we are one consciousness. So, so I sense you in ways that I can recognize, and in ways that I don't recognize, but I do sense the whole the whole field. I meaning I I as consciousness. It's one one uh, indivisible field. That's one aspect of what we sense, what we experience, which is constantly, constantly flowing through us. It's constantly appearing, constantly. Um, in many ways, I mean, we sense the weather, we sense the warmth, we sense uh, in the body, we, we sense across time and space. So the, the other aspect of it is, is the, the personal point of view. That is, when there is a personal point of view, then there is a position. And when, when there's a certain specific position, then we're experiencing happiness or unhappiness. When I'm, when you agree with me, I'm experiencing happiness. When you appear like I want you to appear, I'm okay. When you appear not according, different from how I want I want you to appear or I expect you to appear, then I'm experiencing, you know, uh, 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 some uh, some some resistance. So that's a different thing. The, from from the perspective of of having a personal self position, my ideas about me. And about the world, which are which are rooted in my belief in a, in a me, in my belief in consciousness being separate and personal, and 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 you know my my own my own view. So from that perspective, what we're experiencing is a roller coaster ride, and it sticks. It sticks because we have a position that we are holding on to and something comes against that position, then we are blaming, rejecting, uh, uh, denying, uh, fortifying, etc. So a, there is a there is an inner work and effort going on within us as opposed to um, the previous uh, way of, of sensing, sensing everything in the world as, as it appears to us. And it's an important distinction here that, that, Shiva, that uh, uh, Shiva was pointing to um, that, you know, that, that there is this, this we sense, you know, we, we sense people's energy, thoughts and feelings and sensations, but they don't, they flow through us. They don't, they don't take us off the track you know, as a way of speaking. They don't disturb the peace of being. Which is very. I am so grateful for you. You making it so simple and clear, Magic. God bless you. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay. So clear. What a nice voice. I pick up on your vibe. It's oh, I'm grateful for you and your mother and father. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. Good. Yes. Yeah. Any any questions?
it's it's very interesting how like sometimes we can be in a conversation in a relationship and there is the conversation or whatever is unfolding at the same time there is an inner world where we are possibly annoyed and which means there is something in us that's saying no or saying stop it or saying I don't want it and, uh, to notice that to to sort of include in our experience not just what is happening but also our inner position our inner uh, uh, conversation our inner silent position to to see that in whenever we are we're agreeing or disagreeing out of uh, some pattern we're, we're resisting because we don't even know why you know, it could be a really old thing that we're totally out, not out of touch with, we're not in touch with it, but there's a resistance. The resistance, we can sense it. We can sense it because like, it's like, when is he gonna stop? When is she gonna stop? When, and, and to, to explore relating as being. Not, not with that, no position, sort of to, to be the presence. That's, it's an exercise. It's an exercise. It's a very, very helpful exercise for your freedom. Not that you need to fix this relationship or, or, or get on, get it get in a better place right now. No, it's just an exercise. It's, a, it's an exercise between you and yourself about, wait a minute, is it possible for me to be in a conversation, in a relationship in this moment where there are emotions inside that are resisting? And obviously, you know, you understand by now that resistance is unhappy. It's unhappy across the board for you, for the other, for the universe, for the cat, for the bird, for it's unhappy. So you're exploring freedom from unhappiness. Okay? So as, it doesn't matter if you, you could be talking to your boss, your friend, your neighbor, to, to the mailman, to it doesn't really matter. It's about Your freedom, which is a freedom, there's only one freedom. So not to, to, to explore being in the midst of this inner angst, but also to be saying to yourself within that angst, look, I'm, I'm here, I'm gonna explore the possibility of, of just being there, sensing this and listening, because it is possible. I, I'm telling you it's possible because of firsthand experience. It is possible not to exclude your feelings, but to see through them and to be the presence listening presence as an exercise, as an exercise between you and your contraction. It's yours. It's your own emotion between you and your emotion. Why should always your emotion win? Why? Makes no sense. How about you winning every now and then? You know, you winning. I mean, you. I 
uh, and I, we all understand, we all know how the mind has a lot of ammunition to maintain its position. We know that, we've done it a million times, right? So it's not like I don't have the arguments. Of course I have the arguments that prove to the entire world how wrong you are, how wrong she was. But it's now it's between me and myself. It is no longer have to do with anybody else. It's between me and myself. Between the unhappiness and the peace of being. Yes? It's just an exercise, an experiment. It's beautiful what you said now, Magdi. It's so touching and so true. I just wanted to add that uh, Atmananda was actually a policeman in ah. his job. <laughs> yes. And yes. he said it was the best job <laughs> to be in touch with yourself, with the truth. Yeah. Walter, Walter is a policeman. <laughs> oh. Is he? <laughs> and so was Atmananda. A top one. <laughs> Atmananda, okay. Atmananda is among us. that it is very valuable to have challenging experiences and to maintain that anchor it it has been a blessing yes yes that's great i'm 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 so glad that you're doing this exploration you know for on behalf of all of us it's really beautiful walter thank you thank you thanks it's, it's, no I'm so happy that I could make it, Magji. This is so beautiful what you do <laughs> and what everybody does. It's just so beautiful. Thank you, God. Yes. Yeah, it's it's all of us coming together that that makes the beauty. That that's we're all sharing this the same love, you know. I often have the image of friends sitting around the fire of truth, you know, like camp, the campfire of truth. We feed the, we feed the fire and, and we are fed by it. You know, we're all, I mean, all 7 billion of us are seeking the same thing, which is uh, peace and happiness in everything that we do behind our desires for cars and homes and money and relationships, etc., is peace and happiness and freedom and love. And so we, we choose to be the expression of that, you know, rather than just receiving, we're the channel, the channel of that. So we, we channel the, the love, the peace, the beauty. In other words, we, we act, we, we are the, the, the message, the message is too big of a term. We are the, the channel, we, we channel for the kindness and the love and the generosity and the fairness. Um, yeah, so it's acted through us, it's lived through us. And so we say yes, absolutely. We say yes to, to, to love, beauty, peace, intelligence. And 
whenever the fears and the old model arises, we apply our our intelligence, our understanding that that to go back to maintaining the sense of separation is nothing in it for anybody. There's nothing in it for anybody. It's not the path, you see. I know it's an old habit, but you know, uh, uh, at some point, uh, the habit, the mind recognizes the uh, understanding. You see, understanding goes permeates. It doesn't come from the mind, but it permeates the mind. It affects the mind. And the understanding is that that there are no separation, that I as is the reality of awareness of consciousness of, is it is not limited. It's not limited, it's not contained in any container, it's not personal. That there is one reality, and if there is one reality, then everything and all of us are it, we are this one reality. But the whole the whole package, the the whole nine yards is to this one reality. Your reality, the reality of the world, the reality of the mind, the reality of the universe. This is one reality, which we know as consciousness, because we, we know directly via our experience of consciousness, awareness, that which is not an object, but yet it's, it's ever, ever present, it's, it's presence itself, it's, that which which is the isness of of things and the amness of i so we get on board with that yeah we get on board and the, the way we get on board is via our life how we how we are how we live how we listen how we are in relationship how we are when somebody cuts us off in traffic, how we are when something doesn't go our way, how we are when we are disappointed, all of that, all of that. Can we, can we understand truth? Can we understand God, God's whisper in everything? Rather than saying, oh my God, it didn't go my way. It should have, it would have, I should have, she should have, he should have. No, no, you don't speak like that to God. You don't. You should have, you should have. What do you mean? <laughs> you should have. You say, I love you. That's okay. I mean, you know, I'm not saying being stupid, but I mean, your heart and your being, you recognize, okay, okay, fine. What is real has never ceased to be. And what and that which is not real has never been. So that which comes and goes has never been. The body, relationships, money, house, children, wives, kids, husbands come and go. Because that's what they are. They are dancing molecules, atoms dancing in the space. But that which doesn't dance in the space is the space itself. That doesn't come and go, which you know as I, as aware presence. You see? Okay, well, thank you all, very lovely to be with you, Holger, John, Anna, Nathan, Esther, Holly, Shiva, Walter, Grace, George, Marga, Emeline, Lauren, Jenny, Kelly, Zoe, 
Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, Mati. Thank you. Thank you, Mati. Thank you. Thank you. Love you, Maggie. Thank you. Love you all.